the city tried to sue these guys for releasing information, but then the information got released anyway. Um, so, you know, boo to the MBTA and yay for the hackers. Um, and then the case got dropped and all the information got out there and the kids got, got off. But it was, you know, the, in the United States especially, the legal system is always used first. You know, it's like you sue first, ask questions later. Um, and that makes a lot of computer security research very, very nervous. Um, you know, for, for the, for the, talk, for the um, next few slides I'm going to talk about, um, I pretty much thought I was going to get sued as soon as I released the information. And that's a bad thing, right? We don't want to have that in our community. It's better to be able to release information and help people and go about it not having to worry about all the legal stuff, right? Just worry about the technical information to, to get people um, to learn. So smart parking meters. There's just a lot of applications out there. Uh, I can't even list them all, but those are, those are some of the core. Um, the, the smart parking meters, uh, I'm going to talk about this. I wanted to talk about a bunch of different details of, of hardware hacks, but I realized that I could stand up here for, for days and, and you guys probably wouldn't want that. So um, cut it down to, to one hour and my favorite hardware hack, uh, which happens to be the parking meters, mostly because um, I was involved in it and it just happened recently, so it's still cool, but also because it covers all sorts of different aspects of hardware hacking. It's not just looking at a circuit board and changing something. There's all different aspects that I, that, that I covered in, in the process. So tearing down, analyzing, um, figuring out attack vectors, and then emulating protocols, all these different things. So even if, even if you only want to focus on one part of hardware hacking, you know, your friend might be good at something else. Then you can start teaming up and taking advantage of all your skills. So parking meters, um, the parking industry, the fare collection in industry generates $28 billion annually in the world. Billion. That's a lot of money. Um, and parking is one of those things that you don't normally think about, right? If you drive, you go, you pay your money, and you walk away. You don't think about all the financial problems necessarily, or uh, social implications. If the meters are, 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 are broken in a security fashion in some way that you could say remove the value and, uh, and cause somebody to get a ticket. Um, uh, or uh, legal applications as far as, you know, th these devices are now computers. So they're not a mechanical device that's very indisputable. There's a computer, it's questionable if, you know, did it actually run out of time at the right time. So questions that you might be able to then go fight in, in the traffic court about. Um, so this work I had done with uh, Jake Applebaum and Chris Tarnofsky. To look at San Francisco, there's a, a lot more of, of details um, on, on the website, uh, but this is sort of the core of what we did. Um, in the early days, park computers were all mechanical, and uh, now, at least in the US, has finally caught on. Um, starting to move from mechanical meters to smart meters. And these smart meters are just electronic systems running firmware, there's a display. Um, but everywhere else in the world um, ha had started doing this a long time ago. Parking meters, um, user interfaces, there's the coin slot, right, if you want to pay with a coin, um, which some meters don't even have anymore. Now you have smart card interfaces, you pay with a smart card, you pay with a credit card, which is something that a lot of uh, a lot of cities in the United States are starting to do. And there's a whole slew of problems with doing that, as opposed to using smart cards. But I won't get into that now. Um, some of the administrator interfaces that a legitimate traffic enforcement officer would use are the same as the user interfaces. The coin slot, the smart card. Um, so the same slot that you use to insert your smart card and pay for money, uh, an administrator, especially uh, the meters that we looked at in San Francisco, can insert a different smart card and communicate with the system that way. Um, infrared, the coin slot had an RF, uh, um, had, had a coil around it so you can actually communicate through some inductive coupling with a special reader. All sorts of, all sorts of stuff. Newer, newer devices have wireless, GPRS, connecting to a cell phone network. So now you have these parking meters on a network. And you know, I, I talk about meters here, but think about it with whatever product you're, you're looking at or whatever product you want to look at. These are just kind of, this is just like general um, guidelines. But there's just all sorts of stuff you can take advantage of. Any single entry point or any single interface on a product is, a, is an avenue of attack. So if we're looking, you know, I read a bunch of data sheets on the parking meter and I saw, okay, there's a card, there's a coin slot, smart card, inter, infrared wireless. Each one of those could potentially have vulnerabilities that we could take advantage of. I mean, the possibilities are just endless, it's mind blowing. So we decided to just look at one interface, which is the smart card interface, primarily because I'd never really done work with smart cards. So I said, okay, this is gonna be a good excuse to buy some tools and start experimenting with it. 
Uh, but we weren't the first to look at parking meters. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly building on, on previous work, just like we are in, in the computer security industry anywhere. We're constantly building on, on previous work. Um, New York City, uh, New York being, being the place where if there's a con, somebody will figure it out to make money. Uh, and they had electronic parking meters come out in 2001, and somebody found out pretty quickly, they used infrared for the, for the, audit, for the audit logs, for the administrator to pull down audit logs, the usage of each parking meter. Somebody figured out if they had a universal remote control set to a certain IR frequency, a certain channel or a certain button, um, they could reset the value on the meter. So say you park your car, you pay your $5 for parking, you walk away, you think you're fine, and then you know, some guy that doesn't like you walks up, removes the value, meter maid comes by and gives them a ticket. So, you know, the person thought they were fine, and now they have a $50 ticket waiting for them when they come back. That's sort of a social implication. Um, San Diego had a stored value smart card that Hikari looked at in 2004, uh, a different stored value implementation than what we look at. But it's just, all of these things just shouldn't have happened. But they do. You know, it's, it's 2009, almost 2010, and some of these problems have been around longer than we have. Um, Chicago had a bunch of multi-space meters recently deployed. And these are meters that, that, that are common in Malaysia that I saw, is you have one meter that corresponds to an entire block, for example. And you go to the meter, you pay money, you get a little ticket, you put it on your dashboard. So you don't have discrete parking spots, you just have, if you park, you, you pay your money in a meter and you put, the, put a little sticker on your, on your thing, as opposed to paying per, per spot, and having a meter per spot. Um, as soon as these things were deployed in June, the, uh, uh, there was some, some firmware problem or something going on where in a certain region of the city, the, the meter stopped working. And, and the media, of course, was like, hackers did this. Hackers are coming down on us. They're taking over the world. Um, and uh, I, I think it was a bug in the system that wasn't tested. But it was interesting because it could have been some sort of social disobedience, some sort of hacker attack. Because people were really pissed off that Chicago implemented this new meter. They raised the rates. So there are possibilities, and, and there are still possibilities in that meter system um, to, to take it over. Um, a lot of other smart card hacking has been done. So again, we're building on previous work. Uh, the Dutch phone cards that were, that were talked about in HackTick, and Rob is here somewhere who had a hand in that. Um, FedEx, Kinko, Satellite TV is, is a really well-known one. So you know, we're not talking about anything new, and we're not talking about anything groundbreaking. And that's, you know, if you're going to take, take home anything from this presentation, it's, you know, hardware hacking, it's not always this, you know, high tech, brand new, you have to do something new. It, it's just taking advantage of, of, of problems that have been there for a really long time. And people, you know, companies need to learn that. You need to kick them and say, look, you shouldn't be doing this. You got to make products more secure. Um, so San Francisco paid $35 million to deploy this new smart parking meter system. And that's a lot of money to, to solve a very small problem relatively. Um, they were trying to deal a lot with fraud of meter maids going by and opening the meters and skimming money as they're, as they're uh, um, cleaning out the meters. So San Francisco said, okay, well, if we put in electronic meters that can do electronic logging and keep track of everything, then, um, then people aren't gonna be able to steal anything. Uh, but they paid $35 million to fix a, I think it was like a, a 1.7 or a $7 million problem, a very small, portion of money relative to the amount of money that they spent. Um, they use a McKay Guardian meter and there's a, a stored value smart card that has either a $20 or $50 value that you pay in cash, you go and buy somewhere um, at the store. So I was able to break this system in three days um, looking only at the oscilloscope captures of the smart card communication. So I didn't need to know about what was going on inside the parking meter. All I had to do is go up to a parking meter um, with an oscilloscope in the middle of the street in San Francisco, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. Stick a smart card shim in there. Stick a smart card in, monitor the communications. Go back home, analyze everything, and then go and try my attack. But what we did do anyway is buy a parking meter off eBay. The early version, the McKay Guardian, instead of the XLE, just an earlier version, just to get some ideas about what's possible. And they're sort of fun, you know, part of the, part of the whole teardown. So we open it up, realize there is an ASIC, an application-specific IC, that has a Z80 microprocessor. So a very general purpose processor type that's been around for a long time. The, uh, um, the program code is stored on an external uh, um, flash device, so it's easy to, to remove. It's the, the one on the left. Um, easy to remove, stick in a, a general purpose device programmer, read the code right out. And then knowing it's Z80, you could toss it into some Z80 disassembler, 
and, uh, and get an idea of what's going on.